tyranny. It's as American as beer and baseball. This is the America Beer Baseball Tyranny Podcast with your hosts, Joshua Sopko and Aaron Bloomer. Here we are, Josh. What's up, man? How are you? I'm tired today. Yeah, you were, you were up a little <laughs> later than I, I was. Had, I had night. a late night last night. I, w- I went to bed about midnight. You were what, later than that? Yeah, I, l- I left our store at uh, about 2.30 this morning, 2, 2.30, something like that. Yeah. Made Oof. a couple rounds around town, but uh, should we get started with our uh, feature? Yeah, what do you got today? Feature drink. I, uh, another fun looking, yeah, I'm a graphic designer, so I pick things based on nice design naturally so this is a fun looking uh label yeah. basically and it is the beer brand is shock top and it has a lemon with a mohawk and this is a lemon shandy there it is what is a shandy a shandy is like uh when you put lemon lemonade in beer oh so could you have or a, could you have a peach shandy uh do you if you have peach aid i suppose <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Um, I think I think shandy specifically is for like if you take lemonade and mix it with beer. Oh, okay. Uh, because you would do like uh, some people do like orange beers where they mix orange sure. juice. Yep. I don't know that I ha- that has a specific name, and I hope that doesn't catch on. <laughs> like, I'm gonna find you an orange beer, and we're gonna have. Oh, it. Bud Light makes an orange beer. Oh, cool. Uh, it might be actually an orange shandy. Uh, it's terrible. So it makes, it's super sweet. I'm I'm really close to to ordering that hot dog beer. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, I'd have to try it. But apparently, there's a beer out there that tastes like hot dog. Yeah, or is it I, just like hot dog water? I don't. I don't. I didn't even read the article. I saw the headline. Yeah, and I was like, I got to share this with Aaron because this would be. Is this a twist top? Yep, twist her off. Okay. So, shot top is a wheat beer, and so then mm-hmm. it's a natural progression for them to do a shandy. I've never had their shandy, uh, their lemon shandy. Just I've had regular shot top. So mm-hmm. this would be interesting. Shot top uh, was kind of a. One of the first offshoots where a big, 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 big brewery tried to fake it like they're a f- small brewery, and so they made shock tops, but it's it's Budweiser. Oh, so all right, then. Um, <laughs> but now it every now everything's owned by Budweiser or right. InBev, so it doesn't matter. Uh, let's jump into this. Okay, so last episode, jo- I, well, I messaged Josh today. Um, so this is what what is today Monday. Uh, Sunday night in Sioux Falls, uh, we had a, a peaceful protest uh, downtown um, honoring the life of uh, the George, what's his name? Floyd. Floyd, that's right. Uh, there he is. George Floyd. And, on you know, also kind of Black Lives Matter, kind of uh, police brutality, excessive force, I police, things like that. So uh, from what I've, when I, I wasn't down there, uh, what I have saw, what I've seen, uh, that upwards of two ish thousand people were down there doing it and they had a uh, a peaceful protest um then they walked from downtown Sioux Falls to the Empire Mall which is a long freaking way first they went up to Russell did they, they really? They took they took Minnesota up to Russell turned around and came back and walked all the way down to Minnesota down to 41st holy buckets. and then all the way over to the Empire Mall. I was gonna look that up. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what the mileage is, but it's a long walk. That's got to be three miles. Oh, at least I should have looked this up beforehand. But um, so anyway, these people uh, once they got from the protest, um, once they got to the Empire Mall, it basically was sundown at that point. Yeah, it was. It was. It was getting late, and and mind you. They had strayed far from the original path of the peaceful protest. Right. That was that was never the. I mean, we can, we can go into the nuances of of a permitted pro- protest, but it was far outside the realm of of the permits of the plan. What they had shared with the city. It's five miles <laughs> from downtown <laughs> to the Empire Mall. That's a long walk, but so they and they held up traffic. A lot of them walked on the street too. So I mean, it was backing right. up traffic. And then they all converged over at the Empire Mall, and like not you said, not all of them, from yeah. what we've heard. Right, right. So, uh, what? I, th- I thought they. So I thought they said kind of at the peak at the Empire Mall. It was. I mean, but it was still. 
It said potentially 1,100 people, 1,200 people. At the mall, though, too? I thought that's what they said, which is a lot of people. It is, yeah. Uh, maybe not that many. Either way. Um, and so, but basically, once sun comes down, uh, these people start uh, not being peaceful. They start throwing rocks through uh, windows. They start looting things um, throughout the city. Uh, the city or the mayor puts down a, a executive measure or whatever it's called, a uh, to shut the city down at 10 o'clock. Obviously, they did not listen to that. Shocker. Shocker. Uh, threw stuff at police, broke windows in cars, and, I mean, and, and did exactly what people in Minneapolis are doing. Granted, there were no fires that I knew of. I heard there were bullets, sh- there were fire shots fired, reported of shots fired. Also, one of the, one of our genius reporters, uh, <laughs> Picked up a shell casing and it's like, look at this. It's like, you should probably leave that on the ground. That's evidence, guy. Not anymore, it's not. Not anymore. Anyway, um, so there, there was big deals. And, and I wanted Josh to come over real quick. This is a little bit of an impromptu uh, uh, a, a recording because our last episode, we were pretty harsh on cops Yeah, it, in general. And you got some feedback on that one. Oh, yeah, we got plenty of feedback. <laughs> Pros and cons. We had people who were uh, that agreed 100% with us, and we had people who disagreed vehemently with uh, how we presented our, right. our side. I think, I think as a whole, I don't think it's a controversial topic to say that uh, uh, police shouldn't be killing innocent people. And I don't think it's a controversial to say that uh, the system needs an overhaul to make everyone better. I don't think that's controversial. Um, th- we had some disagreements on how we said some things and, and yeah. whatever. Uh, I, w- I was going to tell you, before we started this, I had uh, a friend of mine contact me, and, and she just made she, – she said, I listened to the podcast. Um, I didn't necessarily agree with, with some of the things, but I thought you brought up some really good points sure. um, and, and thought it was really thought-provoking, and, and overall she really liked it. Um, so yeah, I thought that was, that was good, positive feedback. You had yeah. a couple, uh, dissenters a little bit more heavily than that, but, uh, yeah, point, point is we just got done talking about cops and police brutality and here right. we are in our own city it, looking at a, a wall of police, literal wall of police, <laughs> a literal protecting, wall of police. uh, yeah, property. protecting private property. Um, and honestly, what I want to say is I, I think they did a great job. You know, I, 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 the whole time I'm watching this uh, in the live feed and I'm just thinking like, I don't even know what to do. Right. You know, as, as a libertarian, as, as a peaceful person, as a person who is typically um, not pro-police, I don't want to say anti-police, right? but, but not necessarily pro-police. I'm not a thin blue liner. I'm not like, you know, oh. back the blue, no matter what type of type of person. And here I'm just looking at these people throwing rocks into the Empire Mall, and I'm going, the cops should probably do something. Yeah. But I don't know what that is. And so they did use tear gas. They used flashbang grenade things, which they're not necessarily grenades, but they just loud noise in a flash they, of light. Uh, and they reportedly used rubber bullets as well. I don't know that – I don't know that I, that was ever confirmed – um, I think it is worth notice, noting that there was, I don't think anybody went to the hospital. No. I don't think there's any uh, reported injuries that resulted no. in anybody going to the hospital from, from the entire events of last night. So that was that was a positive. Uh, here's also something that they've gotten a lot of criticism for. Well, some criti- criticism for from last night is there were only two arrests made last sure. night. Last night. Now... Uh, they are swearing up and down that they've got all this camera footage and they're going to find these people who wrecked things and looted and things and they will uh, arrest them. And, I, and, and part of me is like, you know, I kind of hope they do. Uh, but they got a lot of heat last night for saying, well, what's the point of even being there then if you're not going to arrest anyone? But my thought was, is, is I've seen this footage from all over the country where all of a sudden there's, one guy that gets arrested and then it just goes absolutely haywire. Sure. And there are fires and there are flipped over cars and there is gunfire and it is, it goes, it goes off the rails 29,000 fold, you know? And, and so I thought, I think, 
And I, again, I don't know, maybe I, my mind could be changed, but I think by not showing that force last night at the Empire Mall, it showed restraint and it showed understanding of the situation, um, knowing that the one the, when you arrest someone, it's gonna go down. And yeah. you, if you, if you are prepared to arrest one person, you're gonna be prepared to arrest a hundred people because it would have gone nuts. Did you read the Argus Leader article that I sent you uh, about the protest and about the wall of protesters that stood? in front of police to protect the police even. Yep. So I rarely read the Argus, um, but I did. <laughs> I, see I know, that. but it, it was a good article. That piece. It was, yeah. I, I, I saw the, the imagery of, yeah. I mean, there were people throwing rocks at the police and then there were other protesters who then created a line between the bad actors, which is the, the, <laughs> the, the, the term being used for the looters and the rock throwers so the bad actors, a line of protesters, and then the police in these line of protests were protecting, at quote unquote. Well, I, I, at least trying trying to a, a show a, a visual uh, side, trying to calm sure. the the violence. They let one of the protesters on the speaker from the police saying, "Hey, this is stupid. Stop." breaking things right. stop doing this this is supposed to be a peaceful protest and this has gone off the rails so i don't know i just wanted to put that out there because we were harsh on police uh as as a whole and i think that was a lot of i heard a lot too is like you can't say every police officer every police department is the same it's like yeah you know what the the police department in bobstonville South Dakota is different than New York City NYPD right. or Minneapolis PD. And, and I get it. But listen, in the ep our previous episode, we had to make somewhat broad statements well, to, sure. to get a point across. However, in this scenario, we're able to pick out, um, pick out the Sioux Falls Police Department and the South and the Sioux Falls, uh, the mayor even. I mean, as much as I love to... <laughs> not give him credit. I feel like he did a pretty decent job last night. And I mean, it, it, it really honestly, truly, really, truly hit home for me yesterday because we're sitting in bed last night. I'm watching this on my phone and two of my neighbors are involved. Right. One of my neighbor is on the front lines at the mall. And the other neighbor was at the like command center, like just making sure we're, you know, everything's working out and things like that. And so like it, it it's different because it's it's people I can throw a rock at and hit their house. Yep. Yep. For, for yeah. <laughs> Probably not the greatest comparison, but you know what I mean? I mean, there are people I actually know and so I mean and again, it, so it, it does it puts it in perspective uh a little bit further, but um so I want to do talk about now because I've seen this both ways. Uh do these riots work? Oh. And, and, and this is, it's obviously tough and, uh, work is a, is a debatable definition, but, um, is the only way to, and we'll, and we'll say for this specific, for the George Floyd piece is the only way to get racial equality or the only way to, uh, have police not murder people to that, the cause and effect of when said, when a police Per police officer murders someone there's looting and then there's protests and there's property damage and there's cars on fire and there's things like that like does that does that form of uh action or response result in a desired effect before it happened in sioux falls i was really leaning toward yes like I, I really kind of was, you know, and, and, and my wife disagrees with me and she's like, this is just stupid. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's just like, they are hurting people. They're destroying lives or destroying property. And I'm like, yeah, they are. And, th and that sucks. And, uh, but this is the result of, you know, decades of, of pent up tensions uh, and, yeah. you know, right. And all of this stuff. And like, this is how it unleashes and not necessarily that's okay, 
but this is the 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 effect of the cause, right? Like, sure. you know, that's just how this thing goes, and this is how you get reform change. And I don't, and and, and now as I'm as I'm kind of reliving just last night, and kind of you know having to go through trying to protect our own store because because there's a lot of threat, and we can talk about that later too. A lot of threat for our downtown area, downtown businesses. Yeah, yeah. That's where the whole thing was supposed to start. I'm kind of thinking like I don't. I don't really think that this is how you go about it. And, and I, and I, I don't think historically it's led to much really in terms of this specific context. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't, it's, I wasn't going to expect you saying that specifically because I know we've talked about, I don't remember exactly, but I mean, you look at, Boston Tea Party, right? You look at the Boston mass, the, in, in turn the Boston Massacre. You right. look at, uh, I mean, and there's a lot in the Revolutionary period of right. riots and protests where protests meant virtually nothing until things got bloody, right? And and I wanted to to compare the two events like the Boston Tea Party or just events of the Revolution. <laughs> That, that led to the eventual war, the you know, eventual declaration of independence. And I wanted to put these two you know, side by side and like these are similar, same type of events. Ergo, this is justification for a riot. Mm-hmm. And I'm seeing, le- I'm seeing more and more distance between those events. Specifically, pe- you know, because there's a lot of people that are saying, oh, this is like the Boston Revolution or you know, the, the, the Boston Tea Party and this is how, this is our founding of America. And I was kind of like, yeah, like, fuck yeah, it is. But the Boston Tea Party was, one, a small group of people mm-hmm. uh, committing a, as we would call today, an act of terror that was not, they did not have the support of the people. So on those levels, it has, you know, similar similarities. But the point is, is they attacked the tea that was taxed. Mm-hmm. They're attacking Target. Yeah. That is completely agnostic. And the Empire Mall. And, and the Empire Mall and small businesses. And, and people's cars. And Walmarts and, and, and liquor stores. Things that are completely unrelated. Now, uh, you know, last night, so just for some context of, of what I was doing last night, uh, I called up some some buddies and I said, hey, uh, I'm just going to be hanging out at the shop. So if you want to show up with some guns, I'm going to have some some pop and we're going to get chips. You didn't call me. And we're going <laughs> to... Get I got him. guns. And we're going to, you do. And Brittany was like, you should call Aaron. I was like, he, Aaron's got guns. Uh, so anyways, I had I had two guys show up. Uh, one guy showed up. He's like, well, I've got my med kit. Um, I've got my two AR-15s. And he puts on his bulletproof vest. Oh, I don't have a bulletproof vest. <laughs> he's like, how many mags you got? And I was like, uh, not many. And he's like, well, I got 50. 50 <laughs> magazines. Yep. And 50 were, 30 round magazines. Yes. Okay. Yep. For for his two, uh, air, one's a short barrel AR-15 that he had a federal permit for. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have brought that much. <laughs> he's, the whole time, because he's the one that he's the one that reached out and he's like, dude, he's like, I want to be a rooftop Korean. Oh, Do you know that analogy, the rooftop Korean from the 1992? So, no, Rodney. I King. know parts of it, but yeah. Long story short, in uh, you know the Rodney King thing, there was a Korean. I think it was a grocery store, and the riots were going on, and the Koreans were like you're not fucking with my store. And the Koreans got their AK 47s and sat on the rooftops and just shot anybody that got near them. And, and they protect, I mean, nobody, no, they yeah. didn't board up their windows, nothing. They just literally shot who anybody that came near them and, and threatened their place of business. Anyways. Yeah. So, so he showed up. So that's what we were doing. And so, you know, we're watching the live feeds and where, you know, he's kind of scrolling through Facebook and he's like, this is what's going on. Keeping us updated on what's going on in other cities. And, one of the concerns that, you know, my wife had, and rightfully so, is some of the protesters would, are, or have been beating up private business owners that are protecting their businesses. We've seen that happen in Dallas, it happened in New York. And it's like, well, that's, that defeats everything. Like, that's not, that's not a, that's not a protest or a riot that anybody can yeah. get behind. And then he'd say, well, in Minneapolis, they stole a Bearcat, one of the police SWAT vehicles, they stole it, and they ran it into the police station. And I'm kind of like... Oh, all right. Yeah, I'm, okay like, with, I'm okay with that. That's something I can get behind. And then he says that out in Dallas, they were stealing police cars and uh, literally putting bricks on the gas pedals and smashing them into each other. It's like, 
that's pretty badass. Like I can, <laughs> like that's a good, you know, like those are the types of riots and protests uh, that I that I think are acceptable. You know, attacking government buildings, attacking not necessarily police officers uh, who who are once or twice or ten times removed, but attacking the system and the facilities that they work for, I think are uh, appropriate means and measures of riots and protests. So, and, and, and that's what the Boston Tea Party was. It was, it was not a physical engagement of individuals, but it was an attack and a protest of the tax on the tea, even though it was private property, which some people contest, you know, I was the, you know, the, the, the British Eastern or the Eastern India Tea Company or whatever and all that mm-hmm. other bullshit. Yeah, there was a lot of corruption. There was a lot of correlation with the British crown and it was the royal merchant and yada, yada, yada. But the fact that it remains that it was a private, it was private property that they threw into the, uh, into the harbor. Getting to the point of what I'm trying to say, that the two have started to veer off, that they don't look the same anymore. Right. You know, if, if this was an attack on the systematic uh, systems of police and police brutality and excessive force and courthouses and judges, and, and if they're really talking, you know, end qualified immunity for police officers and all of the, yeah. the shit that police, you know, and that'll be a whole nother episode in itself. But if that was the message and, so, you know, holding police and government officials accountable, removing sovereign immunity, removing legal immunity, all of these protections and layers of protections, let's attack those things, mm. I would be much more apt to say they have a message, they have a voice, it is clear, it is direct. That is more similar to the Tea Party. That is more similar to saying, we're fed up with the government imposing taxes without representation on us. Here is our answer, or, or here is our response to your taxes by throwing something that you taxed without representation into the harbor looting target means nothing. It's a French damn company. Like here's the thing. Looting small businesses could probably be the worst thing you could do. <laughs> there that's another story. Here okay, so So and, and that, that that's kind of where I'm at with with whether or not I support the protests or not. So while well, the rioting specifically. Or, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm sorry, I'm mixing the two together. Yeah, the the rioting. So here's where I'm at. Is my gut says rioting is bad and it should not be done. And we should figure out a way to peacefully uh, figure this shit out. However, and I just Googled just so I wanted time, right? Or date, right? 1950s, right? I mean, there was a mass, there's a, still a massive struggle for uh, black rights being African American people be considered as citizens and having the same rights as, as, as white Americans. That's 70 years ago. Okay. So I'm sure there were violent protests. I know there were violent, there was massive violence against black people. Um, but the majority of, uh, I think protests, uh, were, you know, with Martin Luther King specifically, was anti-violence, right? Right. So it's been 70 years of basically anti-violence from, if, 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 and again, let me qualify this too, because I want to, I want to talk about this a little bit too, but if you're looking at that, if you're looking at this as a race issue, which somebody's going to be like, Boomer, what the, f- <laughs> yeah, a ra- okay. <laughs> I'm not totally fully convinced that this is a racial issue. However, if you're looking at it as a racial issue, I, I can I can wrap my brain around why you're seeing it as a racial issue. Right. Okay. And I'm not I'm not you know all of my white privilege show, <laughs> but if you are looking at this as a as a as a black and white issue, uh, it's been 70 years of peaceful protest, relatively. Okay. Um. At what point do you just Enough is enough. Right. I mean, and, and, and the biggest thing too, and we've seen the memes about it relative with the Floyd thing is look at the biggest protest uh, on the national stage anyway was Colin Kaepernick. Right. How many, yeah. how, uh, and, 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 and about police specifically. Right. How much shit did that guy get? <laughs> and you still get shit for it. For protesting. He got fired and you still get shits for it. And, and again, my gut in my gut reaction for that was like, stand up, bro. 
stand up, man. Just stand up during the national anthem. Don't be, you know, use a better. But now again, I'm looking at this. It's like, whatever. That's what you thought you wanted to do. Whatever. That's what you want to do. But look at how much crap he got for doing peaceful protests. Yeah. He got fired. He, you know, he got um, whatever around that. Anyway, uh, so another guy gets killed. Another black guy gets killed by a police officer. What are we supposed to just uh, what? March down the road. <laughs> yep. What do, what do we what do we do? Like get, how do get how a do permit we, first? How do you get it? How do you get attention? How do you? Because obviously this stuff is it's not resonating. Right. There's not a there's not a single sane person in this country, in the world, that looked at what happened to George Floyd and was like, yeah, he probably deserved it. <laughs> there's not a sane person. <laughs> Okay, there's not a sane person, and so that's where I would I wish this would kind of go past race, right? Uh, and just be a police abuse of power, because um, I honestly feel like that message would get more traction, because you got white people on your side, type of a thing. Uh, I, I I don't know, and again, you have white people on your side right now. There's not, I mean. Right. We all know racism is bad, right? Yeah. I don't think there's a sane person out there <laughs> that says, yeah, you know, you should be able to discriminate people based on the race. Right. Um, so that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm kind of like, let me sum this uh, long story up in a couple of words here. Is like, I, I think it's bad, but I also don't know what the other option is. And, and I... <sighs> I have I, I don't disagree with you. I have to just think that it that that the that the target needs to be focused. So uh, riot, riot uh, we have a problem with police brutality. Mm-hmm. Uh, on, on, on black, white, brown, red people, there's a there's a problem with with excessive force. There's a problem with government accountability. There's yes. a problem with police accountability. Yes. Let's attack that system. And to me, that that system is police departments. It is police cars. It is, it is the it is the SWAT team, not the people of the SWAT teams, but the systems and and the equipment that police use. Like, tear that stuff down. Tear down the courthouses. You know, ruin ruin the systems in place that allow them to have that level of protection. Man, l- like a long time ago, at least not a long, long time, like six to eight months ago, I put up a post that said. Don't worry about something along the lines of don't worrying about why uh, citizens have AR-15s. Worry about why police officers has these. And they showed it was a picture of an M ramp, which is a military yeah. in IED absorbing vehicle, right? <laughs> well, somebody last night, bro, in the middle of this riot, commented on that post from six to eight months ago, maybe even a year ago, and was like, "Oh, these things come in handy tonight, don't they?" I'm like, "No, that." No, uh, not for police officers. I go, yeah, yeah. Military people should have these. Yes. It's a military vehicle. If you are worried about running over IEDs, you should have one of these. Um, it's not going to help you with rocks being thrown. You know, this is something that I just, that I just thought of actually, as, as, as you were talking, two points that I want to make one that you made last episode that police have a different set of standards on rules of engagement than, than do military. Yep. yep. But yet we have a militarized style of policing true so that that's one aspect the other aspect that I, that I just thought of as as i'm thinking of you know tear down the systems in place that protect the officers last night they had the national guard uh, uh activated yeah mobilized or whatever. mobilized for the downtown area because police were handling the crowd control and the rioting control on the south end of town yeah well, the police department is on the north end of town, the downtown, where the initial uh, threat was perceived um, earlier on in the, in the night, and the National Guard was supposedly activated for that specific area. Well, the police department for a long time was barricaded. You couldn't get within 50 feet. That The roads were blocked off. They had armed barricades that you couldn't even come up to the police department. And I thought, just now, that's interesting that they didn't place that type of level of protection anywhere else. I mean, I, and I, and I realized that logistically they couldn't do that. Yeah. Right. But they were very concerned about making sure that their police department 
didn't get trashed. Way more than they were concerned about private businesses getting trashed. Active. I mean, you see, you see what I'm saying? I and, saying. And, and I understand logistically why that makes sense. Yeah. And, but the point is that on the whole, police are self-preservationists more than they are protectionists. Everybody says, you know, all police are there to protect and serve. And I always put dot, 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 the state. They are there to protect and serve the state. Well, they didn't protect anything last night. Exactly. That, that's right. that's kind of my point. Yeah, and, and is that it's they, not a negative thing. And I don't want people to take that as a negative thing either. And I right. want to clarify one thing, too, where you say that people need to uh, um, focus their frustration and focus their anger. Josh is not calling for violence against police. I'm right. <laughs> I'm, you're right. I, I mean, don't want police. I'm saying not violent. I mean, I don't think that violence against police is the answer, but I do believe that we need to better focus. I think it's just when people are angry, they make rash decisions. Uh, yeah. If, if this, the fair. fact that it was a week later in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, it seems a little kind of, and it was like 15 year olds rioting. Yeah. That was, yeah. is an, is another caveat to this whole thing. Um, I, I feel compelled to respond appropriately to <laughs> you probably should attacking police specifically. What I'm trying to say is attack the systems that keep police uh, protected, meaning the courthouses and police stations. Now, inevitably police are going to protect those systems. I mean, they're going to put their human lives on the line to protect those systems. If I was a cop and I saw a thousand people running at me, with, 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 I mean, for literal sense, torches and guns and, yeah. and, and axes and, and whatever else, maybe just, uh, put your shit down and go home and, and just, and just, and just don't protect the systems that keep your job. But and again, I, let's, I mean, think about this too, is systems is a theoretical thing. <sighs> And so Which, by them destroying or by anyone destroying a property, that hurts me and you more than anyone. Because it, it, because it, it, they, we have to rebuild it. They're going to rebuild it. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. We don't have to rebuild it. They're, going, know, they're, they're going, going to rebuild it. And so then it's just more money out of our pockets that could go to our roads, to our schools, to our blah, 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 blah. Because they're going to rebuild it is the, is, is the, is the issue. I know, I mean, Killer Mike, uh, well, I don't know if you're familiar. Turn it down again. I don't know if you're familiar with Killer Mike. He's like, I don't know if he's a rapper or whatever. He's a big, uh, he's a big Black Lives Matter uh, voice um, in in the country, but he's he's based out of Atlanta. I mean, he he call, he has a really interesting speech, um, and then you guys should check that out if you haven't seen it. But basically, what he's saying is like, we got to vote these people out. Fuck me. I, I, but I'm I know. I mean, come on. You got to show. You got to show. You got to put in, you got to, well, you got to, you got to use your vote, but it also have to hold people account, your elected officials accountable. You burn down all the courthouses. That's accountability because they're not going to, they're not going to hold themselves accountable. So we burn it down. They build it. We burn it down again. They build it. We burn it down again. Eventually they're going to run out of shit. <laughs> yeah. Cause me and you are going to run out of money. <laughs> I mean, but I get it, but that's. It doesn't. It doesn't do any. It, it, it's more. Um, it's still more focused to attack them than it is to attack Target or small businesses. The or, problem with that is that it's a. Lo that's a long term solution. Well, yeah, because we have. I, I don't because we have career politicians. See previous episodes, uh, <laughs> and these people are, are are around forever and ever and ever. And looting a Target or looting a. a Freaking Verizon store to steal freaking cell phone cases. Um, that's instant gratification. Granted, I don't know. I'd it like, doesn't actually change anything. I'd like to see the courthouse burned down. I'm probably. How would go, you? The ever, FBI is probably going to come to my home after this. Yeah. Be, Remember your whole chicken story. How would you? How would you get your chicken money back if you didn't have a courthouse, Josh? <laughs> Well, the previous episodes, considering the police did very little to a protect my property and then b help me recover my property, uh, anyway. the motherfucker should burn down because they're they're not serving justice. They're not doing their job, and if they're not going to hold themselves accountable, and I have no reasonable means to hold them accountable, 
I can't sue the government because of sovereign immunity. See upcoming episodes as we get into all of that stuff. That again means we tear down the systems in place, which starts with tear, tearing down the physical attributes that built those systems. Does it start with that? I, I'm, I'm leaning. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say, yes, that's the hard and fast answer, but I'm leading toward yes. That, that, that's my thoughts. You can disagree with that. That's okay. No, I, th- I, I definitely disagree with it. <laughs> I think it's, it's a harder, longer process, but simply holding people accountable will result in more change. I mean, and, and, and how and, do you hold government accountable ever? And and that is where part of me is just like, hey, government, if you fuck up, we'll burn your shit down. Yeah. So I'm I, yeah, I, and that's yeah. A, like that's what's part of me. That's where I'm part of me at. So I I don't know. This is a, this is a roller coaster episode. This is, it's up <laughs> we, and we down. Did, and we back didn't and we forth. didn't talk much about it prior to. So no, we knew we had nothing. We knew. I mean, I messaged you and I was like, "This is what I want to talk about." You can you come over tonight? No. Like, yep. Now on on that point, uh, there there's some articles that I have yet to read that I've got saved, and then there's a book that my wife just bought me too about anger and, management, <laughs> about peaceful protesting, and and about rioting protesting and and the and the changes that it has brought about historically uh, on both sides so both in peaceful protesting uh you know Mahatma Gandhi type of type of shit I suppose supposedly because I told my wife I said look peaceful protesting doesn't do it doesn't accomplish goals it just it just doesn't and she went out and found me a book and and so we're on this maybe someday we'll get into this on a in a Christian level about being a, a violent person even violent on the act of defense. Like, where would Jesus stand on that? Yeah. So that's how this conversation, I'm not going to get into that in this podcast, but that's how this conversation came about. And there's this book that this Christian author said, look, here's how Jesus would, would want you to act and, and, and work toward systematic reform and change peacefully. And here's where it's been instituted historically and where it's worked. And my wife bought me that book. She's like, you need to read this. And then, and then literally right after she bought that book, now I'm getting served ads because she used my computer to, to buy the book. Now I'm getting served ads about some other articles and things, you know, sponsored Anger posts management. about um, here's why rioting uh, promotes, you know, reform change. And, but I think like Rodney King, right? 29 years ago, we, we basically just repeated that again 29 years later. What about the, 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 the shitty thing is, is what would make most impact is just not having to pay taxes and the federal reserve and we're done you just about spit, spit your <laughs> but think about that what if what if Fuck we yeah. could not if we could just go to our boss and be like no pay me my money yeah but they can't because then they get you know what i mean I, yep. but think about that think about that if you're just like uh take the piece out of my check that goes to the cops <laughs> privatized police that i mean that solves the problem we burn down all the courthouses we build private courthouses we have a private why court can't system we have the why do we have to burn it down what the, I, I, because then I, you think you can we're, we're just, even if it's private oh, i get I, here's okay i want to end this because we're, we're coming on in 40 we're, minutes hey, we're just gonna we're just gonna vote for private police that's what we'll do we'll just vote in private police it'll be fine uh, we'll just vote harder aaron vote harder <laughs> uh okay. well if okay. if actual if people actually voted maybe you know and if politicians weren't, I've got such thoughts on that. faces. Here's the thing, too. I want to let my white privilege show for a second <laughs> because I do think we, we, and this is a gut instinct that I don't have a lot of research and 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 thought not not thought I have thought behind it, but not <laughs> uh, like I don't know. I I think we gotta we we have to take the race out of it. We have to take race out of this issue with the George Floyd thing. It was, and and again. I'm, I, I understand how that sounds to some people, but the, the, the heart of the issue, the root issue is that police have too much power and there are, they are, and they are killing people, not only black people, they're killing white people, they're killing Mexicans, they're killing everyone. I couldn't nod harder right now. If I nod any harder, I'm going to swallow this microphone. Glasses will fall off. Um, 
And so we have to take race in my, and this is my personal opinion, take race out of this, come together as a, a society to get police to change. Yes. It, if, if we sit here and say black, white, black, white, black, white, black, 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 that becomes the, the conversation. If we come and say, Hey, look, police are killing people. They need to be held accountable. We need shit to change. This is all of us coming to this. This isn't a black, white, red, whatever thing. This is a human thing. I feel like that has more impact, but I, but I, I, I can't sit here and not pretend like I understand. I, 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 I can't right. understand it from a black person's uh, standpoint. I, I just from a five minute read in a history book. There's some <laughs> shit that right. went down. So again, I, I get it, but. The, the, sh- the shitty part, and I'm not going to get into a new topic. The shitty part is is it's hard as a white man to even have that conversation. Yeah. Because you say, look, the, the police didn't kill a black man. They, they killed a person. They killed a man. They killed a, a dad. They killed a father. You know? Yeah. Are you racist to say that? And, he killed and a black suddenly person? it's like, oh, so you don't see color? <laughs> you know, like. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I get what you're saying, though. So, I don't know. So, shock top lemon shandy. <laughs> oh. This, this guy, was pretty good. This guy was fantastic. It was good. I think this is. I honestly, I think it's better. It's it's not as sweet. You know, I'm not a super big sweet guy. I think it's on the same sweetness as like a por- that pork rocker that we had, and so I think it's less sweet than uh, Lion and Kugel Summer Shandy. So if you think Summer Shandy from Lion and Kugel's is too sweet, definitely give this a shot. This is a great. This is a great summer beer. Hundred percent. Ninety loved, degrees today. Love a good beer for this. Loved this one and. I don't, I don't necessarily care for the line of Kugels. Line of line of line of Kugels. Yeah. Line of, line of Kugels. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Yeah, I liked this way better. Okay, what do you got? Liberty Steins. Four and a half. Woo! I'm going three and a half. Ugh. I like I like this. Maybe it's a hot I day. Mean, there's nothing super like complicated about it. It's a wheat beer with lemon squeezed in it. <laughs> but it was good. I like. Yeah, it. And it was good. So three and a half is a good solid beer. Three and a half. I mean, if you think about it, does that mean it's a C? <laughs> I kept giving it a minus. That's why That's I gave why it we probably sh- we, I know I nixed doing the the, the quarter pieces <laughs> in the beginning. Like I would have given this three and I'd give it three seven five four and three quarter. But you know, all right. Well, it was a I great conversation. Yeah, you got to do the about do the that. outro. It was a little quiet last time, so I'm gonna turn it up a little bit now. But <laughs> just you got to put like when you find it. You got to put like taper markings or really something do. on there so that that you can know. Because the like, first episode is way too loud; no one could hear anything we were saying. I like the. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's the buzzer. Oh, I, I, I see now. I was going for the. Hell yeah! Oh, Hickory's getting run. Uh, well, thanks everybody. It was a good conversation here. I appreciate you having me over. Yeah, uh, to, thanks to for talking over kind of last minute. I think uh, I, I one of the big things I, I felt like we needed to, to say was like, you know what? We were pretty hard on police. Our local police in this certain situation last night did a did a pretty good fucking job, I think. And I can't I, disagree with that. Yeah, and I, I hope if shit goes down again tonight, which I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't, um, I hope things go as semi smooth as it did last night. You know, I I don't know that given if you, if you would say this is what's going to happen, you know, that the, this is how the, the, the protest is going to morph right that. And then we said, no one died, (laughs) you know, no one was really arrested. There was, there was some collateral damage with shops being broken into and things like that. Um, I think we'd call it a semi semi win. Overall. Overall. So, uh, yeah. BeerBaseballTyranny.com, everyone. Go check it uh, out. They got all our episodes up there that we referenced and future efference, uh, future episodes that we're going to reference. Yes. Um, I don't know. I was really proud of our last episode. I thought I, I thought it went really well. I got a lot of – I got some very positive feedback on it. I did get some negative feedback, but you know what? That I love that, too. We, we don't take the easy stance no. always. And that was the thing too. People were like, they had a gut reaction to it, and it's like, yeah, you yeah. should. People are dying, like, <laughs> uh, and police are killing them. Yeah, you know. So, so all right, 
Uh, check out our merch. Check out us. Uh, so you can support our podcast through the merch. There's also links where you can buy us beers online, which is pretty Ooh. sweet. So uh, awesome. Thanks, everybody. See you.